Oh, <laughs> well, that looks funny. Oh. What's happening my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris. And today it is a quick little makeup tutorial to dirty up your hands like Michael Myers seen in Halloween Kills. We're gonna be doing his grimy grotty right hand as well as his partially fingerless bandaged left hand. Now the methods and the materials I'm gonna be using are on the cheap. This is a budget makeup job. As we all know, Christopher Nelson, the award-winning makeup artist who did the makeup and the mask for Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, and eventually Halloween Ends, used Skin Illustrator palettes to dirty up James Hugh Courtney and Doug Tate's hands. Now the best reference I have is actually from Doug Tate himself, him posting on his Instagram of him getting made up as the shape for doing stunts on Halloween kills. And this is some stellar reference. This is great to have on standby in terms of trying to get the look right, the layers with the browns, the blacks, and also the blood work on the bandaged hand. Now as we can see here, Chris Nelson is using a Skin Illustrator palette. Please keep in mind, they are quite expensive. I've never owned one. I've only had it applied to me by people that own them. Again, we're going to be using student acrylics that are non-toxic, skin safe, so it's a much more cheaper route. But if you do have Skin Illustrator palettes, most notably the Dirt palette I think it is, and the Zombie palette, you can utilize those ones and it'll look a trillion bucks. But we're going to try our best to make this budget one look a trillion bucks as well. So with that being said, let's get to it. And you're damn right I'm wearing my work rights because I want to get into character. Now in terms of what you're going to need, it's pretty straightforward. Keep in mind these are uh, student acrylics, they are skin safe, they are non-toxic. It's just a good substitute if you don't have a skin illustrator palette. Like I said at the beginning of the video, those can be quite expensive. So this is just gonna be on a budget. So we've got a black and a burnt sienna student acrylic. That is gonna be for the main uh, coloring of the hands. You know, we've got our browns, our blacks, especially the blacks getting in our nails. As you can see, I'm still getting black out of my nails and it's not like it's hard to get off once you're done. It's just sometimes it stays in the cracks of your nails, but that's all good. Uh, in terms of the blood for the bandaged hand, you need something that is going to dry. While it's all well and good to use fake blood on the bandage and on your bandaged hand, keep in mind that that stuff can still rub off and sometimes doesn't dry properly. And you run the risk of damaging your mask. Well, not damaging your mask, but the, the fake blood rubbing off on areas you don't want it to rub off on, especially on the neck area when you're pulling your mask on and off. Even your coveralls, you know, you might just accidentally wipe your coveralls and there's blood where you don't want blood to be. So you need something that is going to dry, again, these are just student acrylics. This is just a different brand that I had lying around. I didn't have brands from uh, these companies here, but we've got a darker red and a much more brighter red just to give a bit of contrast with you know fresh blood and dried blood. This I just have on standby. This is Liquitex ink. Uh, I probably won't use this. It's probably best not to use ink because it can stain your skin for quite a bit, but it's just, again, on standby. This is more or less for the bandage, not for your actual skin. And we're not really putting this on our hands, we probably subtly do a bit on the knuckles of the unbandaged hand. I also have uh, a makeup sponge, just a regular disposable kind of almost chip brush, but like a fancier chip brush and a finer brush. And I also have um, some adhesive tape, some medical adhesive tape, and that is just gonna hold the bandage in place uh, when we start the, the wrapping process. And then also to tape it up the end. You can also use those hook teeth for bandages. I just don't have one on, on me at the moment, but adhesive tape will suffice. Alrighty, so we're gonna do one hand at a time. We're gonna start with my right hand. So I'm a lefty by nature, so it's gonna be <laughs> very goofy to paint my left hand with my right hand. But our first step is we're gonna grab that burnt sienna student acrylic and water it down a bit. Now, it, you've kind of just got to eyeball it. You don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick. You know, you want this to get in all the crevices and all the creases of your hand. And we're just going to apply it like so. And as you can see there, it's getting in all that nice porous texture, especially the nails. It's all about the nails with Michael. I just feel like you can smell his nails on camera. So you can also opt for the bigger brush and just apply it like so. And that's a lot better. That just is getting into all the details of my hand. Now in terms of how far up you should go, probably, probably about here. I reckon that's your best bet. All on the palm there. Now keep in mind that, you know, if you are wearing this eventually for trick or treating or at a party and stuff like that, it will rub off uh, on your palm just because of wear and tear and stuff like that. But it, it shouldn't be too drastic. If it's dry properly, and you know, I, I do advise using a hair dryer in between coats and stuff like that. Okay, what we're gonna do is grab a paper towel and just lightly 
dab away the excess. Again, this is gonna be a layered uh, tutorial. You know, we're gonna layer and build this up. You don't want it too thick to begin with. So with that being said, I'm just gonna hit this with a hairdryer and then probably give it another coat. Okay, coat number one, all dried with the hairdryer and we're just going in for coat number two. And you can be a bit sporadic with this one if you want. You can kind of dab it on on certain areas just to break up uh, the look of it, just so it's got you know texture to it, like he's had his hands in the dirt and there's eventually dried blood on there. Especially the nails, really want to emphasize the dirtiness of the nails. And that's when the, the, black, the watered down black uh, student acrylic will come into play. So I'm not actually gonna dab away this layer with the paper towel. I'm gonna hit this with a hairdryer and we're then gonna move on to the watered down black student acrylic. Okay, we've got our watered down black student acrylic. Again, pretty much the same mixture consistency as the burnt sienna. Not too thin, not too thick. I'm gonna grab this same bigger chip brush. And again, for the black, just a bit sporadic, but also just putting a lot of emphasis on the nails like that, especially on the palms as well. I know it looks a bit funny at first, but, but work with me here. And then we just lightly blend and dab away that excess and it just kind of all blends into that brown. Now you might need to go back with the brown in certain areas because it can get a bit patchy because you are you know, mixing um, acrylics together and some of them can get broken down with the water in it. And then also using the makeup sponge too if you like. So just a variation between certain brushes and sponges should work a treat. Now also take the side of the brush and you can kind of slap the layers on and it just uh, reduces the risk of anything else wiping off. The only reason why it is wiping off is because it's it's you know a watered down wet acrylic that's coming into contact with something that's water based as well but once it's dry it's stuck on there pretty damn well. And then it just washes straight off. So we're going real grungy with this look, as you can see right here. I really like this. This is just gnarly and disgusting. And that's what you want. You kind of want that organic, maybe a little cleaner in certain areas, but overall, that's the aesthetic that we're going for. Now I'm gonna let this properly dry, give it another hit with the hairdryer, and then we're gonna move on to the bandaged hand. Now, because these two fingers are gonna be bandaged, I'm only gonna be weathering and doing the washes on these three fingers and just around the palm. Just It just makes sense because you don't need to go ahead and add paint to these when they're just gonna be tucked down like that anyway. Alrighty, I'm pretty happy with the overall coloring of both hands, uh, minus these two fingers, because they're gonna be tucked in with the bandage. Now keep in mind, they don't have to look identical in terms of layering and weathering when you think of the continuity, like hands get dirty at different rates, they're not gonna look exactly identical. And once it's all bandaged up and we do the blood work and the subtle weathering on the bandaging, it's all gonna bring it together. So it, it's entirely up to you, like this type of method is purely subjective you can go light dirt or you can go full-on soiled like we're doing right here like just disgusting you can smell my hands through the camera so the next step is we're gonna grab our bandage this is a regular gauze bandage I just got from the chemist so I do have my medical adhesive tape ready to go so what we're gonna do is place the bandage on the two fingers tuck them down we're then gonna start the wrapping process so there's no real right or wrong it's just whatever you think looks good and looks closest to the film. This is very tricky to do when, you've, when you're doing this on a table. Now I am gonna wrap the other way and go in between the index finger and the thumb like they do in the film. Now I do twist it when I go between those two fingers. It just seems like that's what they did for the film. Bringing it back over where the nub is supposed to be. And again, Wrapping it as tight as you can. The tighter, the better. It's just gonna help it stay in place. I'm gonna go one more time in between the index finger and the thumb. And then I'm gonna cover up as you can see right there. All right, and then I'm gonna go start the process of going around the wrist. Then grab our medical adhesive tape. Tape it down like so in place. Then I'm gonna grab a second piece and just for a bit of insurance, tape it down there. And there we go, we're looking pretty good so far. Okay, next up we're gonna grab our bright red and dark red and just put a bit on the bag here. And then again, you need something that's going to dry on the bandage because keep in mind if you are handling things like your mask and stuff like that, you need something that's gonna dry. Otherwise, if you use fake blood in some instances when it does not dry, 
it'll come off on the mask or whatever you're handling at the time and it's just gonna make for a right mess. So um, just dabbing away where it would bleed through on the actual nub of the shotgun blast. And also just finding that happy medium, like we can then go throw a bit of dark red back in and that dark red is actually reading a lot better on the bandage here. I'm really digging how that's looking. So we really want the top section to be the most blood soaked. Now I'm getting the heavy artillery, bringing the big brush in just to do some extra coverage. And again, kind of just tapering down to like faint whispers of blood like on certain areas. So I'm actually really favoring the darker red. It just reads better on the bandage as opposed to the lighter red. As you can see right there, I'm really loving that. So again, yeah, just kind of have it fading down a bit as you can see right there. And just sporadically placing it over different parts of the bandage. Now you can also do a bit of fake blood on the knuckles of the right hand, because no doubt there's gonna be some blood on there, even on the palm a bit, and you can wipe it in with your hand like so, and just dab it in. This is where it gets really fun. You can really have a lot of fun with this type of stuff, ghouls and ghoulettes, and that's what it's all about, just having a bit of fun. Really liking how that's looking, that's great. Beautiful, beautiful. And the last step is just getting a little bit of that watered down burnt sienna and just tapping it on like we did with the blood just on certain areas and just wiping it away and just wiping it into the bandage just for a bit of soiling, stuff like that. Especially in this area here where his hands would be filthy and like it'd be a high traffic area. I can't stress it enough, really give this area a hit with the hairdryer, ghouls and ghoulettes. It might be a thing where hairdryer it, then give it a break for a bit just so you don't burn your skin or anything. And you want the hairdryer a fair amount away. You don't want it too close up, but that will eventually dry. And that's, I can't stress it up, that's what you need. You need something that's gonna dry, especially when you're gonna be handling stuff like your mask, etc. It's just gonna make for less stress in the long run. Now, one thing I might also suggest, you might wanna double up on your bandage. I'm starting to see now that you can really see the outline of my fingers from putting uh, the paint on here, which is fine. And it's just, you know, it's nothing that's gonna break the bank in terms of the effect that we're going for. It's pretty good, as you see right here. But if you really wanna double up and just really hide the contours of your ring finger and your pinky finger, I'd say go for it. So next time I do this, I'm probably gonna double up on the bandage, but overall the effect, pretty damn good. So thanks very much for watching guys. I hope you got a little kick out of this tutorial. Again, this is something that's just on the cheap and you don't have to break the bank. And it's a lot of fun to do. You can really have fun and do your own thing with this thing, whether it be a, a light dirt right up to really gnarly soiled like you see right here. Oh, <laughs> well that looks funny. Oh. <laughs> guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry. Be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghoulettes, please always remember, cosplayers do it best. Oh, also, warm soapy water will get this shit right off. I hope. No, I'm just kidding. Or am I?